Oops, I probably should have made sure we're working. Okay, I'm gonna do something really quick while I'm thinking about it. Let me drag that on my canvas, go into edit mode. Let me hide this here. Let me know if my sound is okay. It looks like it's picking up. And what else we got here? So we got a B, and I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of this together because I'm gonna do a quick pose. And let me see if I can drop that. Yeah, skin shader four will look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and let's do a merge visible. And we'll go ahead and do a delete all. I don't need to see all of these things. Now we have a merged B all together. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup here. I'm gonna hit C to inherit that color. Hold on, uh, Control Shift, isolate these parts. Control Shift A, make sure I grab them all. Control W, make them all one polygroup. And then I'm gonna do a color fill object up here. Hey, thanks for showing up. Uh, just gonna do something really quick here. So I can, um, Control Shift A, W here, color fill. Okay, and then these things here can stay white. So if I did want to pose this out, I'm actually going to go down here to my... Um, oh, you know what we should have done? Now that I think about it, I don't need all of these. I'm just going to redo... Actually, you know what? I wonder if we can do a... Because I can just redo all the hair too, so I don't have to deal with all of that. Let's go ahead and delete him and I'm going to load that back up. So we're going to go to load tool bumblebee and for all of these I'm going to say let's turn off our what's that called? Fiber mesh? So under fiber mesh here oh, actually we can just delete them. So that wasn't we I forgot we didn't just preview them we actually have them sitting out here. So I'm going to go into solo mode here. I'm going to hit the down arrow key uh, just to cycle through my sub tools. I'm going to hit delete Delete, down, delete, down, delete, down, delete. And the pollen on the legs we don't need. So if you've watched any of the previous videos in this series or on my channel, I think I went back and forth between the two. Oh, we made this guy. And then let's go ahead and delete that one and then I'm just alt tapping these ones here so I can go through and I can just delete those so this will make it a little bit easier to, for him to pose and if I want to bring those fibers back I still got the poly paint on there so I can just push the poly paint or the fibers through the poly paint and we'll go ahead and um, alt tap these ones fill this one fill so if I wanted to pose this guy out we can certainly do that Hey, thanks for showing up. Uh, I'm going to do a really quick pose here, so we're going to merge visible. Now, now that we merge visible, we've gotten rid of the um, fiber mesh here. We can go ahead and delete all, and then we'll go back here to the B. And then now that we got this is one sub tool here, I can go to my flower here, and we'll go ahead and say append that B here. So now I've got a B sitting in there. Now, um, and it looks like I had some mask on there, so I'm going to unmask everything. So. I didn't have to, um, well, in order to get this into another subtool, it was easier for me just to merge down. Um, it's not something I necessarily had to do. I could have appended it one by one, but just to get it in there really quickly, I figured that would be the easiest method. And I could split this back up now, but since I've got it all in one object here, I might as well uh, go ahead and start posing him. And we can talk a little bit about uh, different methods to um, kind of pose him out because you can pose multiple subtools as well. So, for instance, if I have this object here and I had to hold down Control Shift, uh, I like to do like a little bit of lasso. So, Control Shift, switch over to lasso. You don't have to. You can Control Shift. You can stand select rectangle and you can just isolate these things and do this if you want to. Um, you have to select by poly group. But if you grab your lasso here and you just grab a couple chunks, do Control Shift A which is visibility grow all that'll give you this entire thing here now if you control tap to mask that and then control shift to bring everything back and then control tap to invert that mask you can then go through here you can hold down alt and you can just tap on your model here and then that'll set that pivot and now you can like go through here and you can rotate or scale or do whatever you want to do so something like this let's say and then same thing for this side. 
And then if you invert that one, you can just bring it back and you don't have to do the whole masking invert thing here. Go ahead and fold these wings up just a little bit. Uh, and if it's a little bit easier for you, you can also split these up into subtools. So what we can do is we can do this, Control Shift A, and I'm going to do a split hidden. And where that is, is geometry modified to, or I'm sorry, it'll be under subtool, split, and you can do a split hidden. I got my little custom menu here. And now I can just alt tap on these wings here, and that'll select that newly made subtool that I popped off. Now let's say I want to move the B, uh, and I also want to move the wings too. Do I have to merge them back down again and then have to deal with all that? You don't. So in 4R8, what you got was this um, move multiple, so a transpose multiple on your gizmo. So if I tap that on, we get this little stack that'll show up. And now if I hold down Control Shift, let's go back to Select Rectangle. And if I Control Shift Tap, you're going to see, oops, uh, let's hit W. Uh, Control Shift Tap, you'll see everything turns into a hatch. And if I Control Shift Tap it again, it'll invert it and everything will be visible or everything will be not hatched. Uh, if I control shift tap on any one of these subtools, you're going to see it unhatches. So I can say I want this, this, and this, and then it makes them visible. And then I can go through and I can just move the B. Or if I just want to move the wings, I can uh, control shift tap the B, and now I can just move the wings. Or if I want to have the B select, and it's like, you know what, now I want to move the flower. After moving the B around, I can control shift drag, and that inverts. I'm sorry, control, and you can also just drag over them. So if I want to select all the B parts, I can just drag over the B and then control shift tap to invert that. And now I can just move the flower. Uh, so that's also available to you. And then uh, to go through here and move the legs, it would probably be the, it'd probably be a similar process here. So if I wanted to, I can alt tap this B, go through here and just grab these pieces of the legs and then um, bring everything back and then unmask. You could also mask by poly group the legs here. So if we turn on poly frame, you're going to see every single one of these little segments is its own poly group. So if I hold down control shift, we can isolate and these are going to be the same poly group. Um, if I want to rotate them individually, I can go in here to poly groups, auto groups, and that'll give me individual poly groups. So now I can hit W and then control tap any individual poly group and that'll isolate it. Uh, and then I can go through here and set my pivot and then just rotate this around. Or I can still go through here and be like, I want to move this whole arm. Mask. Oops. Mask and then invert or bring the other one back. And now I can just have the best of both worlds if I want to. And you can also use your move brush, uh, set the topological, and all that good stuff. But at least you've got a B that you can pose. Uh, a couple different ways, and you can split this back up into subtools if you want to, and then you can reapply your fiber mesh like we did in the earlier ones. So that's all I wanted to bring up this morning. Um, let me see if I had any streaming topics, or if you guys have any questions, just shout them out. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to check the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 let's see if make sure that's going. I don't see it. Pixelogic Home. Hmm. I'll keep checking back on that. All right. So, uh, is there anything else? Let me check my streaming topics here. It's been a while since I've been on here. Uh, braids of hair cards. Yeah, we can kind of do that. Close. Torn clothing was a request, um, and then the insert mesh UV thing we can try. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and I'm going to isolate all these fuzzy pieces here. And we're going to split those off. And then for the legs here, I'm also going to split those off. So I'm going to alt tap this one. And if it's difficult to see what you have selected, just hold down shift and you can turn off your colorize and we'll go back to a white color. So now when I alt tap through here, I can kind of see a little bit better what subtool I have selected. And it does look like I had something. Uh, interesting. So when I grab this one here, it looked like uh, it had 
Okay, we're good. Uh, so I'm going to grab this one here. It looked like we had something a little bit masked, and since this is just a Dynamesh here, I'm going to go into Solo Mode, Control Shift Alt, and we'll go ahead and just do a Delete Hidden. And I can isolate. Actually, you know what? We can just run a Close Holes. That's fine. And then I can go through here, and we can just use the Move Brush to kind of move these wings into place. Good enough. And then one thing we may remember from a while back, if I take this eyeball here and this eyeball here, and we go ahead and split this out, you're going to see we have these uh, polygons are nice and evenly spaced. I'm going to go into Z Remesher. And we'll do Z Remesher, depth size down to zero, same resolution, just to get those nice even quads. And I dropped the depth size down to zero so I would get nice even quads. And now what I can do is, let's go ahead and go into our simple brush here. And we'll grab a sphere 3D. And we'll go into initialize and we'll just do, actually, do we want to do that? Let's do this. Let's go to make poly mesh 3D, go down here to initialize. And now that I've made it a poly mesh 3D, I can hit Q sphere. And that'll just give us a nice simple sphere. So when I hit D for dynamic, you can see it just smooths into a super, super low res simple sphere. So now that I've got that sitting here, I can go back to my, and this B we can go ahead and delete. That was our merged B. And our eyeball here. I'm going to hit M, poly mesh sphere, hover over this. We're going to insert a nano mesh on polygroup all or all polygons in this case. We've swapped that out. So now we can just go through here. And you know what, if we wanna, I mean, that'll probably be fine if we're rendering. If we do wanna offset those, hmm, let's see if we can do this. Hover over an edge with our Z modeler brush, B, Z, M. Edge, polygroup, poly loop. Yeah, these are all rings. All right, let's try this. Hold down Alt, and I'm going to get rid of all these inside faces here. Let's do a quick mirror. Uh, we're not across an axis, sorry. I'm trying to think, you know what, I can just manually paint this. So where we can see the eyeball, we can go, hold down Alt, let's go into transparency mode, ghost. So I can hold down Alt here, and we can go Alt Paint this, and then let go of Alt and just keep tapping, and you can make it a new poly group. And then here, and then tap, and then here, and then tap, and then here, and then tap. And this is probably something I should have done before I went and merged everything. Now, if I want to go ahead and keep painting this poly paint, I can hold down Alt and then start painting and then tap Shift and that'll inherit it. So why am I doing this? This way I can stagger the uh, nano meshes here. So I can go hold down control shift and we can probably get rid of, let's grab this one down here. Alt, tap, there we go. So all this purple stuff back here we can get rid of and I'll just duplicate this other side over. So go ahead and delete hidden. And now I'm gonna offset either, every single other one of these here. So we'll grab, Actually, it probably would have been easier just to do this. So we're going to grab this one here. So if I grab the select lasso, we can grab this one, and then this one, and then this one, and this one. So we didn't even need really need polygroups. This one's, there we go. And then this last one here. And then we'll hit Control W, invert that, Control W. So now, if we hover over a face here, insert nano mesh, all polygons, we'll do polygroup all. And then we'll go ahead and insert it on here. 
and then we'll do another one on here. And now under our nano mesh properties, we have two indices. And you know what? I'm going to copy this and then we're going to paste it on here so they're both the exact same. And then for this index here, let's offset. Well, you know what? Let's let's get one settled in there first. So we're going to say Z offset. We're going to embed that into the object here. And we're going to cr over crank the size just a bit. And now that we have that, we can go copy and then paste that so the other one fits. Or it's the exact same. And now we can do the other offset here. So Y offset, nope. Z offset, no. X offset, yeah. So we're going to have to go down here to alignment. Say align to normal. And now let's try our offsets here. I wonder if, let's go back up here to geometry, modify topology, and we're going to do a line edge. And now let's go down here to offset. So Z offset goes in and out. Y offset kind of does something weird. We can go Y and then X. So we say both of these are like at 0.5. Eh, maybe not. You know, it might have been easier <laughs> just to remake the eyes as cylinders. And then that probably would have been, because uh, that way I could have skipped the whole thing. But you know what? We talked a little bit about Z remesher and all that good stuff. So we'll offset this one a little bit. And then we'll go back to our other index. And then we'll do an, another X and Y offset. And this probably would have been just as easy, like I said, to make a cylinder and then get it into place. So we're going to over crank this scale a little bit and then we'll over crank this scale a little bit. And now we can say, okay, uh, we, we can either go to inventory or we can go up here to geometry, convert BPR to geo, and that'll give me real geometry. We can isolate that. And then we can say delete hidden. We can hit D. And I'm just going to go through here really quickly since I don't think it'll be that apparent. Now we can just inflate this up. So we'll kind of have a knobby eye look, turn off transparency here. And then we can just push that into place. And obviously this head isn't really sculpted that much. So we'd probably want to clean that up, but we can just control drag out a copy and then we can just get this other eye into place like so and Good enough. And if you wanted to, you know, you could also randomly distribute that, but it won't be very organized, so probably not. And also, you can make them a little bit smaller. So if you wanted to double your resolution, you can hit Control D, and then draw your nano mesh out again. Excuse me. Thank you, Ian. Okay, so we have Twitch, we have YouTube, and then Facebook. Oh boy, I'm not seeing the Facebook stream. Let me see if I can see it. If I, if I apologize in advance on the Facebook users if I don't see your questions because I don't see it. Hmm. It may not be going to Facebook. Sorry about that. So, we'll go ahead and save this just in case. Oh, and we still, have, we still do have our poly paint here. So, if we'll hold down shift and bring back our poly paint here. We can grab that and then we can fill our eyeballs here and if we want to fill it with a different material uh, we can say let's do toy plastic and then if we turn on mRGB we can go to color 
fill object with our eyeball selected. And then if we go back to Skin Shader 4, your eyeballs will be nice and shiny and everything else will be uh, whatever we're inheriting from these uh, materials here. So we'll go ahead and save this out. Bumblebee. Bumblebee scene. Alrighty. Um, what else we got? Streaming topics. Let's see if there's anything we want to work on here. Um, yeah, and if you guys have any questions or you want to see anything that's worked on, I've got about another hour. And we can do anything you want. Anything's easy in ZBrush. If, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. It's easy in ZBrush if you know what you're doing, and I may or may not know what I'm doing depending on the topic. Let's go back to our medieval zombie here. I don't remember where we left off on this guy. Let's go back into our white color, and we'll go ahead and take this here. Okay. So it looks like on this guy. Oh, you know what? Uh, let me see if I have... There's a thing I can type in. Give me a second. Stream. <sighs> Streaming. And let me go back here. Let's see. Drafts. Let me, t let me try this from Restream. Hey, K. Chang. Uh, maybe not. Let's see. ZBrush Live. Oh, wait. There we go. Now it should be mine. Um, we'll set a live seed to a gold material. Always struggle with that. Well, hmm, gold. Let's see if we can do a gold material. You know, well, okay. That's a good one. Um, let's see, delete all. So if we have this here, and we want to do like a gold brooch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and we'll go ahead and turn off all our poly paint here. And also if we want to, if you want to make these things nice and smooth, I like to use dynamic subdivision. So we're going to hit D and that'll turn these little bits here. And I also like to separate out like resolutioned objects here. So we'll go ahead and take these ones. You know what? I'm going to say, you want to solo mode. I'm going to grab all these here. Control shift A. Grab this one too. Let's go ahead and split this off. I'm going to hit D for this one for dynamic. And then these ones, I'll hit D. And these ones, I don't even have to smooth that much. So I'll go into my smooth subdivision here. And all of this is under your geometry um, dynamic subdivision. So D and Shift D turns that on and off. And that way you can see what it would look like smooth without having to res uh, resort to actually adding subdivisions. You only want to add subdivisions, like real subdivisions. Uh, when you are perfectly sure exactly what you want to do. So, uh, is there a... You know what? I've been in PBR land for so long that doing a gold material in ZBrush might be a little bit difficult. Um, if I go, let's see, render... So one, the, the quick knee-jerk reaction would be uh, send it into Keyshot, because Keyshot does have... Uh, oh boy. Sorry, full screen. Give me a second. does have very nice, thank you Camtasia. Um, set this up here for y'all. Uh, obviously, if you have access to the ZBrush Bridge and Keyshot, uh, it'd probably be my first choice. So now this inherited the ZBrush Gold that we brought in. However, also under here in the materials, you can go into Gold, and we can say 24 karat, polished, uh, anything you want. So you know, we'll do polished 24 karat gold. And if we drag this onto our ZBrush model, <clears throat> all of it, that'll go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me. And now we've got <clears throat> gold with reflections. 
uh, which we can talk about in ZBrush, but this is the easier one, I suppose. And then if we go in here to an environment, obviously we can go in here and just throw it in an environment. And then we'll go ahead and say uh, lighting background color. So now we're getting environment reflections. Looks a little bit better. Um, boy, that gets busy though, doesn't it? So that's one way is the key shot route. Now in here, uh, I would just went over here to the matcap materials. So if I wanted reflections in here, what I'd do, let's talk a little bit about materials. And I do mean a little bit because I'm, I'm not really a material expert in ZBrush, but we can give it a old college try. So if we do want reflections in here, uh, okay, here's another thing. So if you go to my YouTube channel, let me close some windows here that y'all don't need to be seeing. Okay, my YouTube channel, and underneath here under my playlists, if you go, uh, so zbrushguides.com, I went through Pablo Munoz Gomez's uh, website. We did the ZBrush guides for stylized rendering. That went really, really deep into how matte caps work. So if you want more info on, info on that, you can watch that playlist. That's a decent one. And then, uh, so that, long story short, anything you put as this icon right here, so if I change this gold out, well, and let's not do it to our gold because we want to play with that a little bit more. Let's go to one we're really not going to want to mess, or we don't care if we mess up. So we're going to say uh, droplet's kind of cool. Uh, let's go matcap satin. So if I change this to anything else like this texture, uh, this is what is lighting our material capture. So if you have a really nice gold, or you can even go into Photoshop and just make an image and bring it in, um, you can just make your own gold and tweak it like that. You can also go into your material cap, matte cap properties here, and uh, or even light cap. You can make your own. So you can go in here to light, and then light cap, and you can just build your own image essentially and that'll give you uh, all that stuff so we can make an eyeball and that'll give us that shading so if we go back to our gold here and let's say this gold is good and it's all it's essentially doing is giving us this preview and if we go into our material settings here we can play around with the depth here, which kind of squeezes it in the middle or over cranks it. So as we're doing that, we're changing the lighting. And that's the thing about, uh, let's put this back to one and one, uh, about matte cap is if we go over here, we got our light, we have one light turned on. If we turn it off, our scene looks the same. If we turn it on, uh, everything's fine. If we go up here to BPR render, actually let's go to render, turn off key shot. So we do an internal BPR render. We're gonna get our light shadows cast from our direction, but it's not gonna influence our object. If we go down here to basic material, and then we have our light menu, we can move this light around and it'll update. So, and then when we hit BPR, and then this on this, if we're using basic materials, uh, we can turn on multiple lights and it'll affect our object. So we kinda of gotta pick between, do I want a matte cap that I can have this kind of control with a baked in lighting or do I want a regular material which is called standard material and then I want dynamic lighting to affect my object. Uh, if we stick with this one we can at the very least uh, we play with any of these settings um, you can also even change uh, these colors down here to give you a little bit of a different effect but if we want to add uh, a reflection what we can do is we can mix a regular material with a matte cap. So if we go here and we can say copy SH and then we go down here to our double shader and we say S1 and we paste SH. Now we have gold in S1 and then in S2, if we turn that off, you're gonna see we just have gold and now S2 is another entire material on top of that. If we turn down ambient and diffuse and specular, you're gonna see now when I turn off S2, uh, it has very little effect because it's really only affecting the rest of these parameters here. So if we grab a texture and we plug in, I don't know, that little mountain scene here. And then in here we do, where's my reflection? Envir well, environment reflection? No, I think it's just reflection. It's been a while since I've been in here. Reflection exposure. Ooh, there's a bunch of stuff in here now. Uh, 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 maybe it is an environment reflection. So let's go back up here to our specular diffuse. Let's turn off S1. Oh, 
Let me think. Oh, reflectivity. That's what I'm looking for. So not environment reflection. Turn that back down. Reflectivity. If we crank that up, you're going to see we start inheriting the reflections of this object down here. And then, so now if we turn on our gold, now we have gold with reflections. And then we can turn down the diffuse. No, let's see, the diffuse is going to carry that. So we might have to play that diffuse curve. Specular, I guess we can turn down all the way. And that curve we can play with to kind of just make sure that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's also see how these are mixed. So if we go down here to the mixer, we can say S2 is mixed by, and this is kind of like a Photoshop thing. We can try a multiply or a overlay might be better. So now we're overlaying the results of shader two on the shader one, shader one being our gold, and then shader two being our reflection. So now we've got a reflection here, ambient down to zero. Hmm. Play with that. That might get you a little bit more control. So now we have the gold matte cap with a um, the double shader that you have S2 uh, ability to mess with. Or um, any of these in here. I think about, well, that's the other thing too. That's another thing we can do. Um, Marmos, any PBR render uh, painter, you could go and you can drag a gold in there. Let me see if we can do that real quick because we don't need to necessarily paint anything. Let's do that. Let's try this. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and apply these subdivisions so everything's nice and high res. So what we're gonna do is, uh, you know what, if we do bake stuff, you know, we can bake low to low. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, so what we can do in ZBrush is we've got all these things uh, sitting here. I'm gonna do, number one, you can see if we want to keep these things nice and smooth when we uh, merge them. In fact, I'll make these even smoother by cranking up the smooth subdivisions in our dynamic properties. So those are nice and smooth. Uh, if I want to maintain that for all of my uh, subtools, I have to go over here to dynamic and hit apply to give it real uh, divisions. Or I can go over here to my Z plugin and we can say dynamic uh, clean tool master. And then there's a DS all, that's dynamic subdivisions for all my subtools. And that'll basically hit apply for all my subtools here. So now when I merge them together, um, merge, mer, 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 subtool, merge, visible. And then there's our merge subtool here. Now I could just take this into Marmoset. It's only 300, 3.5 million. I don't handle it just fine. Um, or in a painter, if I, if I am worried about my external render, what I can do, is I can quickly go to the plugin here and then we can do decimation master preprocess current. And you know what? Since we've got all this pollen here, it might have been a better idea to voxelize these, which would basically be so the little stems and then the pollen beads on it, instead of trying to decimate all those down. You know, what? I'm going to hit escape. Let's do this. Instead of talking about it. Let's grab all of our pollen here and all of our stems here and all of our, this piece is here. I'm going to split this out because we're going to simplify this down. We're going to, so the, I say voxelize, really what we're going to do is we're just going to dynamesh this together. So let's we'll make us all one object here by going into our dynamesh. I could do it the right way for you guys. Geometry, dynamesh, and we'll say hit dynamesh. That's a little low. Crank it up. You can also use Dynamesh Master. If you're familiar with that, that's a plugin you can use. And now what we'll get is uh, all of this stuff kind of stuck together and that'll reduce a lot better than having to reduce all of these little pollens here. Uh, you know what, let's hit, we may be hitting the max limit of, uh, yeah, I really don't want to have to divide this up, but you know what, we can. All right, we'll do this. Control shift A and we'll split. And now let's see if we can dynamesh this. There we go. 
And then we'll alt tap this side over here and we'll dynamesh this. And then we'll merge these down. And we'll dynamesh this. And we'll drop that resolution quite a bit too. Because I'm not really so concerned about the details in here. In fact, I want to dynamesh it down as low as possible. So we can get in here and we can say, you know, I'll drop the resolution down even more. Yeah, that'll be fine. So now this is all one piece. It's been essentially voxelized together. And now uh, when I reduce this thing, so if I merge this together now, and now we pre-process, uh, these things won't be separate objects. So you could voxelize this entire thing. If you wanted to, you could voxelize the B together. And by voxelize, I just mean dynamesh together, sorry. And then we can reduce this to our external program. Uh, Rakesh says, do you ever use macros? Yeah, um, one macro I use all the time is Polish Polygroup Borders. I can show you that as soon as this is done. Um, I do one, if you've watched on my YouTube channel here, this uh, ZBrush image based lighting, I use a macro uh, that was on the forums to turn off when you do a light cap and you capture your uh, high dynamic range image as uh, a background light. You can, it'll turn on all the lights for your hemis upper hemisphere, so you can select one light and then turn it all off, turn off the rest of them with a macro. Um, I also use Z, instead of macros, I, a lot of times I use Z repeat it. That's a plugin you can add here. Almost done. I'll show you that in just a second here. So, reordering. Give it a second. Uh, so Z repeat it is essentially a plugin you can install from Pixelogic website. Just Google Pixelogic downloads, and you can go through and uh, you can record. It's like an action script in Photoshop. You can record what you're doing and then hit stop and then name it and then you can tell it I want to apply what I just did to this single visible subtool or all visible subtools or all subtools. Uh, I'll use that a lot. And I guess worst case scenario, if it doesn't do this, I can still just export it. It should be fine. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so that's been updated. Okay, uh, yeah, so the mixer function, that was, uh, if this ever stops reordering, it shouldn't be that bad. It's not that crazy of a mesh here, I don't think. Usually for Decimation Master, 3 million isn't that big a deal. Whenever I got something weird. So what you can do is with this one here, I'm going to go down here to Geometry. You know what? Let's make this even simpler. So if I voxelize this, Dynamesh this, let's see if it'll do it. Yeah, let's split these up. Ah. Control Shift A, split hidden. Uh, Control W, we can dynamesh these things at least. Let's go lower. There we go, that's fine. And then the B here, we don't need this. We can dynamesh this pretty low. So now we're at half a million. 
This should go pretty quick. But yeah, so for the material mixer, um, that's how those two shader uh, S1 and S2 and S3 and S4, if you want to do more than just the two, uh, so we did this, let's decimate this down to like, yeah, let's say 200 is good, 200 polygons, there we go. So now this one, we can go ahead, we can export this as an OBJ, should be fine. Or we can do an FBX export, let's do an OBJ export here. Uh, let's say streaming, Bumblebee. And uh, I forgot what I was doing. So yeah, at, at this point, you could uh, just bring that into Painter or Marmoset, and then it would just be like a PBR material that you could assign and make it gold as well. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. And again, like I said, my 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 go-to would be for the most easy drag and drop control would be Keyshot, uh, just selecting the type of gold and then the type of reflections, environment reflections that you want, and then doing your renders in there. Um, but in ZBrush, yeah, I'm not I'm not the best renderer guy. Um, I'm I'm usually I'm more model heavy, but hopefully that made sense. Um, hey, Project Angry Man, thanks for showing up. Rakesh, yeah, so Z, uh, Z repeat it. So if we go in here to Z plugin, let's see if I have any cool Z repeats it in here. So Z repeat it. What one, what's our Z repeat it? I would do a lot. We have a cylinder here, edit, make poly mesh 3D. And we'll go in here to our basic material. Oh, we can just do my cat gray. Um, so a Z repeated, I might use a lot. Okay, yeah, if you wanted to, um, so here's one you can do. So W, you can hold down control and drag this copy out, and then you can just keep dragging this out to make more. And then we can go in here and we can do uh, auto groups, and that give us all different groups. You can also go down here to split. You can do a group split now, because all these are different groups. You can also do split to parts. So now all of these sub tools are here. So now we have a bunch of different subtools in here. So let's say I wanted to um, so accept fiber mesh, bake. We can there, there's some default ones in here. Uh, one thing we can do is we've got our original one here. Let's go down here to geometry. Let's say I wanted to dynamesh all these at a certain resolution. Let's say uh, it, it, you know let's just do this. Let's do record new. And we're going to say, okay, this one here, I want to turn on, for all of these, I want to turn on DynaMesh uh, with a resolution of, say, 64, and then a blur of 0, and then DynaMesh, and then end record, and we'll call this DynaMesh 64, and then we can do, now that we have that recorded and we have it selected in here, so DynaMesh 64 is now selected, um, we can do it to all visible. All of them are all selected, so if we select this one and run selected, it'll dynamesh that at 64. Or if we turn off the eyeball for that one and we turn off the eyeball for this one, and now only these are visible, we can do it for all visible. So now all of these have been dynameshed at 64. And you can do the same kind of thing with the macro. You can say a uh, new macro and you can record uh, macros. Let's see anything else in here I use. Yeah, that uh, polished poly group order is the one I was talking about earlier. Um, essentially, what that one does is if we take this one here and we say, uh, let's do visibility. Let's do select rectangle. We'll do a circle visibility here. Um, oh, you can't use. That's weird. So if I take this here and I want to polish this border, uh, all I got to do is run that macro. And that'll go ahead and polish that border for me. Um, of course, there's a million different ways to do this. You could also do, let's do mass circle. You can mass a circle, hit control W, and then you can isolate this one. And you can do your polish poly group border. And essentially what that's doing is running those operations so you don't have to go through here and do like masking, border. You can grow it a little bit. You can invert it. You can blur it. You can go into your deformation menu and you can like polish it by features, open circle if you want to polish it. Um, and of course, if you're familiar with, um, let's do, can let's put this back. Oh, no, no, no. Let's put this back to our rectangle here. Um, 
if you go through here and you mask and you want to make up, if you make a polygroup now, it's going to be aliased. If you want, you can also go in here to your edge loops, geometry, edge loop, edge loop mask border, and that will go through and cut. If it's low res enough, it'll cut it. Uh, give you a little bit of a nicer cut. There's so much resolution, it's actually making it alias still. Um, just to show you what I'm talking about. Let's drop this resolution down. There you go. And if your Dynamesh ever doesn't respond to a lower resolution or a higher resolution Dynamesh, just tap it and it'll reactivate it. So now, we mask through here, and then we do edge loop mask border. Um, and it's still pretty still pretty high poly. Let me see. Let's go back to mask pin here. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I was getting at. It'll go ahead and just, instead of uh, giving the alias look, it'll go through and just cut uh, between there. So where your mask was, this all this alias stuff, you hit control W to give you an alias look, or it'll cut through the edges of your mask here so you can isolate that and it's nice and smooth. Um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, does he repeat it? Hey Christian, thanks for showing up. Uh, well, if I want to prep something to view in a Marmoset view or SketchUp view, would you or Gumroad Game Rest totally be the right place to learn that? Um, Marmoset, yeah, yeah, I go over Marmoset in the um, yeah the reptile creature series. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Um, you know what? And we can. Since I, since this is Tuesday, I'm on and I'm on Pixelogic's channel. Um, I try and stay a little bit more uh, ZBrush centric, ZBrush Keyshot centric. Um, but yeah, in the game res part here, I do talk a little bit about uh, Marmoset, and if I remember correctly, and also. I, in here, uh, you know, we do the, the painter, the quick painter uh, thing here, and anything that we did speed-wise. So if you go to my YouTube channel here, so for example, uh, the speed modeling and texturing, or an even better one probably is, you can, if you can do this in your head, you can take the Sci-Fi Pistol series and mix it with the Houdini game dev tool set. You can use GoZ to go to Houdini and do the voxelization and game res and UVs uh, and baking if you wanted to. Uh, and then also bake it in Painter if you wanted to. There's a lot of different ways you can go about from ZBrush to external programs. But the Sci-Fi Pistol series, if I scroll down, that would be the baking process. Uh, I don't go into Marmoset, but Marmoset's fairly easy. Uh, you know what, Thursday... I'll uh, let me go to my streaming topics here. Let me do it. I'll do a marmoset on Thursday. You know what? Because I think I need to. Number one, I need to make sure I have it even installed. Um, we can talk a little bit. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, yeah. I have to. I'll have to. Uh, uh, okay. Um, I'll have to do the all the login with Marmoset. Uh, so Thursday, I'll do that, and it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, and that'll be you could export your low res into Marmoset and bake, or you can even throw it into Painter, do all of your wear and tear and like grunge and dirt and scratches, and then throw that result into Marmoset and plug it in, and then get a nice render. Uh, just using a Marmoset properties and lights and materials and all that good stuff. Yeah, I haven't done a, and you know what? Even Marmoset's website has some pretty good walkthroughs of just like the basics. Um, cool. All righty. So yeah, that was Z. Repeat it. Um, and actually, now that I think about that, if we go to, so you'll see I'm running twenty twenty eighteen point one. That's the updated one. Um, if we go to Pixelogic Downloads, Center, you can go down here to the ZBrush plugin. So I've been talking a lot about plugins today. These ones up top all come with ZBrush. And then if you keep going down, these are the uh, employee created. And then so there, there's Clean Tool Master that we use here, ZRepeat it. The IMM Extractor is a good one. Matt Baker, if you do a lot of that texturing type thing. 
Uh, Live Boolean Master I use quite a bit at work, not necessarily here. Uh, Gizmo Swapper, Dynamish Master Keyshot, Scale Sender, we can download that. Turntabler we can download, IMM Draw Size we can download. So those are three new ones, just in case you haven't been back here. Um, what we can do, you know what, let's talk a little bit about that. Since we've been talking about those, all you got to do is download them, and then go to your... C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2018, go to your Z Startup, Z Plug 64, and then let's just, I'll, hold on, so you can see here, I'm going to copy, you know, we'll move them here. So I've got my Z Plugins, um, geez, I'm having a hard time today, I've got my, make sure we can see them. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to right click, 7-zip, extract here. You can use whatever extraction program you want. And what that's going to give me is we've got these readmes, which we don't need. I'm going to walk you through it. And then inside these folders, you're going to have a data and a Z script here. So if we go back to, here's our ZBrush, uh, not our ZBrush data, ZBrush 2018, Z startup. Uh, Zplug64. So here's our folder, and then here's our Z script. So if we, again, with IMM draw size, we take our folder and our Z script, and we'll just move them into here. And then let's grab IMM draw size, it's the one we just went. So key shot. Move the contents of this folder in here. Turn tabler. Move this in here. Okay, so I think that's it. So all this stuff we can delete. So now when we restart ZBrush, anything we need to save? Yeah, we're good. And you know what? We can probably close out of Keyshot here. We'll talk a little bit about these if y'all want. Wait for it. Ah, there we go. And now if you go into your Z plugin folder here, you'll see we have ta-da, um, IMM draw size, and then the turn tabler, and then the other one that we brought in, the key shot scaler thing. Cool. Uh, 2018.1 still can't scale two axis by holding alt in gizmo mode. Okay, let's try that. You know what? Because that was, we have a cylinder here. Make poly mesh 3D, we hit W, and now when we scale, if we start scaling and then hold down alt, that should do two axes. Um, so start scaling, hold down alt. That These Y and our Z and X are kind of weird, but if you're doing these two axes, Alt to scale X and Z, Alt to scale X and Y, Alt to scale Y and Z. So you just have to start scaling first and then hold down Alt, and that'll do those two axes. Or if you want to do, let's see if there's a there's a scale in here. So you could say, I want to do this. You can hold down Shift. Eh, Shift doesn't seem to be snapping at any particular value, but you can dial in your values here if you wanted to scale it, you know, 0.5-ish. Oh boy, yeah, that's not really accurate. You could use the scale deformer to kind of scale here, and then, yeah, you know what, that would be good if there was like a X, Y, and Z. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. That may not be your best skew. No. I'm out of my element. I apologize. <laughs> One of those maybe might be better. But yeah, so you know, scaling and then holding down alt should do at least those two axes. Um Dodruku says, but like the IMM draw size plugin resets the dynamic draw size and prefaces draw to one in case you want any of for if you work with very large models. Um, oh, preferences draw. He 
here. So we can play with that a little bit, I think. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and scale this guy up. So and actually I can turn this off. I think I have that turned on by default when I'm just working. Uh, but let's see if I can, uh, I haven't really played with this yet. Um, if we do go to um, the IMM draw size here. So IMM draw size, if we go to brush insert, I like the clothing, oops. And then we can do a snap assembly and draw this out and then you can hold down control to snap it to your brush size. Uh, if I want to set this to a particular size here, we could say like 15, ooh, 10 millimeters looks like a max out. So let's say uh, eight millimeters and then set it. Now this is set to eight millimeters size. And then I, I would imagine this plays together with scale master here. So right now our scale is 11 millimeters high. This is eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, that makes sense. So you can rescale your stuff in here to different units if you're so inclined. Uh, but then if we did go back to a cylinder, make poly mesh 3D, and then we said, um, you know, set my draw size to eight, then yeah. So now this this one right here, you're gonna see is very small. Yeah, this is only two millimeters high. So that's why eight is very large. So anyways, that'll keep you consistent between subtools here. So if we take this one and then we append our other one here. That's just a snap assembly. Where's my other one? Somewhere in here. Oh, you know what? It probably is that snap assembly. It's just the other one was super tiny. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, so this one here, if we move this one out, unmask it and move it out. There we go. So now you can see these things match, even though our original scale on these things was different. This was two millimeters. This was the other 11 millimeters or so. And then these two should match between them. If that's useful to you. Uh, can I use a ZBrush model for animation? Um, you can. And way back when, uh, the, when the layer system was new and they introduced the movie timeline stuff where you can do... Um, you can actually go through here and you can record uh, different uh, properties you could go through and you could animate your layers if we go in here to layers here uh, but it's I wouldn't necessarily animate in ZBrush unless you wanted to do turntables uh, in which case that's another thing we talk about uh, so turntabler so in movies you can go through here and you can say movie I want to do a Oh boy, it's been a while. Let's see, modifiers, uh, turntable. So I'm gonna snap it here and we'll go to movie turntable window. So this is gonna do a window medium. So it's only gonna do, let's do a document medium. It's gonna take our document and then make it a uh, half size alias. Um, so we can do that. And then if we want to BPR render at first, we can BPR render and then we can run a uh, turntable movie. If we go down here to our modifiers, we can see that we're gonna do 180 frames. Let's drop that way down, let's say 30. Cursor size down to zero, do 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 do, and we'll say that's all good. I think, like I said, it's been a while, and then we can just go ahead. Oops, not a not a time lapse. We're gonna do a turn turntable here, and that'll go through and render my turntable to a movie uh, that I can then take into an external program and edit. Now, if you wanted to render in passes and in, into frames, which you can do. So we got that here. So now if we go back here to movie, we can do uh, export to our desktop. And we could say, yeah, ZBrush movie is fine. Oh, you know what? I should have uh, also under the movie properties, what you probably want to do is the uh, overlay stuff. You can do uh, turn the opacity down if you don't want a logo on there. And then also title image, you can do fade in and fade out time down to zero. Um, anyway, so that'll just export a movie so you can delete that movie out of there. Um, so that'll be 
that, and then the turntabler, what it'll do is you can say, I want to um, export uh, light passes and a BPR pass and a mask path. You can either do your Z depth, uh, ambient occlusion, so or shit, um, exa any of that stuff. And then uh, your turntable frames, you're going to want to make sure your snaps to a view, and then you can generate turntable images, tell it where to go, and now it'll export images. Um, And of course, since I turned on all these passes, it's doing uh, multiple passes for each one. So I'm filling up my desktop right now with a bunch of TIFFs. Um, but at least you have your render passes out of ZBrush, and then you could uh, composite those in an external program. Um, do you know if it's possible to bind Goto on Mesh Mesh Center in the transform gizmo to a key? That's a good question. Go to Unmesh Mesh Center. Off the top of my head, I don't know. That would be a good Drust or Gabri question. Um, you know what? Can I cancel this? I think we've proven our point. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so let me delete all this stuff off my desktop. That's how you would render passes. Um, as far as... So the question is, we've got this here, and let's say our gizmo is way out off to the side, and I just want to sculpt here and it's like well I want to go to unmesh mesh center so I can just quickly move the pivot there um, again I'm not positive there we go um, I'm not sure there's probably a way even if you were to maybe write a macro oh it's another thing too if you go into Z repeat it and you want to make changes and you're savvy with this type of thing you can go in here to uh, edit script Here, and you can say, okay, so for our, well, let's, let's do the one we created. So if we go down here to Dynamesh 64 and then edit Z script, you can go through here and you can edit it. So it's basically set tool geometry resolution, turn off blur, dynam hit, you know, turn on activate Dynamesh, and you can abort anytime by doing um, escape key. So if you go through here and you want to, you know, add functionality to that just by typing it. You can do that. So that's what that script is calling. Um, but yeah, you're right. So to go up here in this way, okay, I want to do like Alt C and have that center. I'm not sure. Oh, Alt C goes with clay brush. Um, what I what I tend to do is instead of going through here and trying to track down, you know, where that gizmo is, um, you can just Alt tap anywhere on your object and then do unmesh mesh center and then reset. So even if it is out of sight, just alt tap your object and then go down to unmesh my center. I know it's two clicks, but in the in, unless somebody has a better option, uh, that would be my 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 go to. Hey side effects, thanks for showing up. Um Okay, cool. Uh, so Dodruku says uh, change log says added go to unmesh my center button for use with the Gizmo 3D center option. So there'd be a new button maybe um, added go to unmesh mesh center button. Go to unmesh mesh center. So, okay, if I was ZBrush, where would I put that transform? Mm, maybe. Or would I put it under <laughs> preferences gizmo? Reset, no. Unmeshed, go to unmasked mesh center. Yeah, if we can find that button, uh, wherever that thing exists, um, where would that be? I want to say trans, maybe not transform. Maybe that would be a, let's see, modifiers info. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, if we can find that button, uh, you can just hold down Control Alt and then tap any button in ZBrush, and that'll go through and um, and that'll it'll allow you to sign a hotkey to that. 
Uh, check the for There's a macro which will center it on the screen so you can press the button. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a workaround. So, hmm. Okay, well, yeah, whenever we find that button. <laughs> Uh, masking. Let's see. I think it's in masking, unless it was always there. Let, oh yeah. So if we go here, and this is our, so if we isolate this, we mask it, and that's our unmasked mask center. And then go to unmasked mask center. All right. There's your button. Okay, so let's do this. Um, you know what? Every time I come on my streams, I learn something new. You guys are the best. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to say, okay, here's my masked area here. There's my unmasked area. I have W, and my gizmo is way over here, so I go to unmash my center. It goes here. So if I want to do hold down control alt, and we'll assign this to alt. Um, Trying to think of something I don't, since I haven't thought about this, if I want to go to, um, say, Alt-8. So uh, I'd go to Unmesh Mesh Center is now assigned to Alt-8. So now um, my gizmo's over here, and my mask is here, and then I do Alt-8. There it is. Ta-da. All right. Cool. All right. Whew. We did it. <laughs> More accurately, you guys did it. Um, cool. Thank you, Dodruku, for finding that out. All right, good to know. So, what else? What else we got? Um, seven o'clock. I have about well, seven oh seven. So I got about twenty-three minutes before I have to run out of here. I chipped my front tooth. You guys probably can't see it, but like the whole back end is like sheared off. So I gotta go. I don't know. Get that filled. I was eating tortilla chips, and it just. I'm getting old, I guess. So I got to run to the dentist this morning so I can stay till about 7, let's say 7.25. We got a few more minutes. Anything else you guys are dying to know? We can cover quickly. Um, and if you are new to this channel, uh, if you go to the Pixlogic YouTube page here, so here's my workshop page. So this will be where this video is posted later. Um, there's a ton of really super talented people in here. You can check them out, uh, and all the other cool. All the SZ brush. I try and hit those up at least once a week, uh, just to keep fresh. And that's where I found out about the new Z plugins. I didn't get to play with them yet, so we just barely installed them and kind of did a real quick use case. Um, that plus uh, on my YouTube channel, I try and keep this. I'm gonna have some new content. It won't be ZBrush specific. Well, yeah, it always is. There's some ZBrush stuff coming out, but I'm gonna have some new videos uh, coming out soon on game res process, which should be fun. Uh, kind of the basics of that. Uh, but here, yeah, ZBrush image based lighting, ZBrush 2018, what's new, um, the Houdini game dev tool set. Uh, that, and again, this still ties back into ZBrush. It was, you know, essentially taking our um, high resolution meshes from ZBrush and then processing it and then exporting it. Uh, all that good stuff. Uh, point selection mode and transform. Oh man, you're getting into some point selection mode. Let's see, let's learn this. Uh, effects away polygons are selected when hiding under the hiding portion of the mesh. Any polygon with points that fall into the selection rectangular. Oh, okay. So if at least one polygon. So let's let's play with this a little bit. So normally when you're doing uh, visibility, let's isolate this one. So uh, if we hold down Control Shift and we have and we're just touching, uh, so right now it's fully encapsulating these this corner here. But if we go halfway through these polygons, it's just going to select those. Let's see if we turn that on. And now we're going to go through halfway through these. Uh, it's still going to do it. Let's do Alt. So Alt, it's just touching. And then point selection. Hmm. 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 I thought it would be different. So here, or this. No, maybe not. Um, I'm not really sure. I assumed it was going to be 
when unpressed, a sort of small smart selection mode is active. If at least one polygon falls, the whole polygon, uh, the rules for point selection mode are in set. Any polygon with points that fall under the selection rectangle are hidden, unhidden. Mmm, I don't know that that's happening. When pressed, so this point is part of this polygon, but it doesn't show up with that pressed. But I feel like here's two points assigned to this, connected to this polygon, because it's still doing just a full encapsulation. I feel like if I have this turned on and I just grab this corner one, it should grab all of these as well, uh, but it doesn't seem to. Kind of like when you hold down Alt, it'll grab all of those, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. Hmm. Not sure about that one. Uh, Hannibal says, in ZBrush, there's a default female head base mesh. I've been trying to open her mouth and even move the topology, but it doesn't seem to work. Uh, yeah, let's see. This one here. Uh, that was hitting the comma key and then going to project and then loading her up. So, um, so we want to open her mouth. So if you've ever loaded up Nick Z's head, what you're going to see is he, he's divided the head up into a lot of different polygroups. What I would probably do is I would go in here to my gizmo, hold down control, and then just start dragging on my model. And that will go ahead and mask um, area. Like it kind of does a topology masking here. Let's go ahead and turn off floor here. So now what I can do is I can hold down control, go into mask lasso, and then we can just say unmask everything but her jaw. And then even maybe control tap to soften that a little bit. And now I can go through here and from her jaw I can pull down. And that'll kind of open her mouth. We can even invert that. Um, and then we can mask. Uh, I'm trying to think. So we got her jaw. And then the rest of her head. Probably just move her jaw. Um, you can rotate the back of her head. Um, but that might get a little bit weird. So now that her mouth is open, um, you can also, instead of... I wanted to rotate her jaw just because it would look more natural. If you're opening your mouth with your jaw, obviously, you can also open your mouth with just the lips. Uh, in that case, it would be, um, let's get rid of all this under the brush menu here. You can try doing the auto masking um, topological, and that'll give you a range. You dial this down to say like 1.5. Uh, oops, uh, whatever brush I had selected, I had topological on. We'll do move brush topological range and now we can go through here and we can move the lips uh, separate from each other because it's going from this topology way back into the mouth bag and then to the top lip so the topology between these two the upper lips and the lower lips aren't very close if you turn that off now everything within the radius of that brush is going to select it so uh, you can fine tune you can do your rough movement with that Again, just hold that W and then control drag, and that'll select like the topology. And you can do that with transpose as well. So if you hit Y, you can kind of see that a little bit better, how the transpose line is following that along. And you can use transpose if it gives you a better result. And then you can hit Y to go back to your gizmo. And then again, go back here and paint in your masks here. Uh, and then, you know, go into move brush and then fine tune these things with um, move topological. Another thing you could do if you don't want to keep, this is what, back to the Nick Zuccarello thing with his base mesh, which is uh, under tool, this one here, Nick Z humanoid. Um, if you hit W and then you control drag through here, and let's say you want to get the jaw. Actually, it seemed like transpose was giving me a better result. Yeah, I like that. Maybe use transpose, everybody. So now, uh, we'll go back to Gizmo, hold down Control, go to Mask Pin, and then we'll unmask all of this here and here. So now, if you always want to have access to that jaw, I would say Control W to make it a polygroup. So now you can just hit W, Control Tap that polygroup, and then um, we can re you know, set your pivot here and then you can just use that. Um, also you can control tap to blur that a little bit and that gives you just a little bit of a smoother fall off here. And also feel free to clean that mask up as much or as little as you want to. And maybe we can go in here to 
move accu. I like to use that because it'll pull out to points. So something like that, maybe. Oh yeah, that's something I forgot to mention. So when I hovered over here, it'll say mess mess insert, and then I hold down control, it'll give you more information. Some of them it's really really pretty, like this one, or uh, transparent. It'll give you a little image and a little. Um, but yeah, as far as that point one wasn't doing what I expected it to do, uh, but I might be doing it wrong. Uh, my mesh moves from center, how do I put it back on this canvas? So if you ever, and this will happen every once in a while, you'll like tweak it off center and then you turn on your floor here and you're gonna see, hey, I'm off center. So have that one selected, go down here to geometry and then position. And you're gonna see your X position is here at a weird value, just type in zero and that'll zero it out. And then now your symmetry should be back on. Uh, occasionally, if that doesn't work, um, hopefully you're able to, uh, this is this is like if it doesn't work at all and it's just off at a random value, let's say we did that as zeroed out, you imported it and it's somewhat kind of weird. What I would do, if the topology doesn't, doesn't matter too much, I'll manually go through with my floor turned on and I'll go through here and I'll just move it into place and then I'll do a quick mirror and weld Let's do a mirror, mirror and weld. And now it'll be down the middle and I mirrored and welded it. And then now I have my X symmetry turned on. But hopefully position the X position, zeroing that out should help. If you start it out at zero, it should work. Uh, line cursor to surface off option. Um, I, I usually turn that off. So when you're, when I'm sculpting, let's see here. So let's say I got the clay brush here and I'm sculpting. See how the cursor follows the surface? I don't mind that if I'm doing like Z modeler and it, it's snapping to like front and side faces. I don't really need to see this thing. Like if I'm sculpting in here and it's like all over the place. Um, I don't need that kind of feedback for my brushes. I, I might need it for like maybe a trim dynamic so I can see that surface normal maybe. Um, but I've been using ZBrush for so long without that, that this is just kind of distracting to me. So I have it just here, align cursor to surface off. Uh, it still has the same functionality. I can still go through here and it's still, fi it's still finding the surface normal. So it's not affecting how it, how you use the brush or how the brush, uh, interacts with your model, but it will just get rid of that kind of wobbly blah, 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 feedback, which I don't need. Oh, and as, for, as far as a smile, that would just be, you know, you got the mouth open and then <laughs> going in here and that's just, you know, going through here and be like, okay, when I smile, my cheeks puff up and then my lips can kind of, they go up and then they kind of tuck in here and that's just going to be getting a good reference and then going through here and then the sculpting. Um, your corrective shapes, you know, so as your smile and then going through here and then even you can even go through here and you can kind of pinch and overlap these things here and then you can go back here and you can mask um, this top one and then invert that mask and you can, you know, make sure that the upper lip goes over the lower lip and then the lower lip goes under the lower lip here and then you can use move topological or any of that stuff now. I know this is a terrifying face. <laughs> Looks like something out of a horror, um, horror uh, comic book, but that's just, let's turn off topological here. So turn topological on and off and then go through here and just make this stuff. A lot of sculpting for your expressions. Um, let's see, let's see. He, uh, I'm having some difficulty making a stroke across a right angle. It seems like it aligns the alpha of the brush to the camera, not to the surface. Hmm. Let's go to cube. And let's say, make poly mesh 3D. And let's say Dynamesh. And then if we grab a clay brush, Let's smooth that out a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, um, I'm 
trying to think if I need to prepare the surface first. What I might do is like a trim dynamic. Because, yeah, if I need to go across an edge, where I think that's coming through is on the clay brush here. If you go under sample surface, no, samples. Um, 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 where is that? Samples. Uh, on surface, preserve edge is set to one. If we really preserve that edge, yeah. So set to one, that's probably what we want. Um, if we go to our trim, what you can do is if you want your clay brush to act more, so here's trim dynamic, which just completely obliterates that edge. Um, so if I switch between trim dynamic and my clay brush here, you can kind of see what different settings they have. So if you wanted to plug in your trim dynamic set, well, first I would go clay brush clone, clone that off so you don't ruin your clay brush functionality. Um, you can plug in your trim dynamic properties into your clay brush and see how that kind of works so that maybe if it's on a 90 degree edge, it will behave more like this. It'll just kind of obliterate that edge if that's what you're looking for. Um, don't know if I have a great answer for that one. By dynamation based measures of spread and ZBrush armpit and thighs get connected, how I fix that. That one is just part of even this this head right here. Let's uh let's get rid of that smile here. So on this one here, her lips are together, but if we go in here and we have a brush auto masking topological here. Okay. So we can move topological here. However, of course, if we dynamesh this, it's gonna stick it all together. Uh, a way around that is if you do wanna sculpt on the lips here and not have them stick together, you can use the new Sculptress Pro. So you can turn Sculptress on. And uh, so that'll be on for all your brushes as long as they don't have some certain settings. So now we can sculpt on these surfaces here and then we hold down shift. Um, we're kind of getting a dynamesh result without them uh, sticking together. So there's two things you can do. Um, if we have a body, and this girl with her arms down is a really good example. So her, if we go through here and we dynamesh her, um, blah, 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 blah. layers, make all. So uh, dynamesh her, these, all these things, and even the hands are going to stick together. So you can either try and raise the resolution of your Dynamesh so you know you don't get as much sticking, or you can go through here and you can say, you know what, the hands are going to work on separately. Oh, we have subdivisions. Let's also bleed that. I don't need all this. Delete other. Okay. Uh, and I also don't need all that. So now I dynamesh this. So now I can dynamesh her body at one resolution. And oops, I deleted everything. Oh, hold on. Here. And then delete other. And then bake all. And then isolate these hands. Ah. Oh. Delete higher. Delete higher. So uh, I can dynamesh this at a resolution, so I can raise the resolution of my hands way up. And that'll cause less sticking, but even then they're going to be sticky together. You can also decide, you know what, I want to go in here to my Tessimate. I might have to have, let's go ahead and do a close holes here. So instead of dynamesh, you can go into your Tessimate here, and you can Tessimate at let's drop our polygon size down. and this will be interactive so now you can increase the resolution of your object without having to worry about sticking together because it's always going to keep them uh, separate and you can even go in here and sculpt with your sculptors pro mode so instead of dynameshing you can tessimate if that's your thing if you want to do that instead and this is it tessellates and decimates here if you turn that off um, it'll only get higher and then if you reach that threshold so anyway uh, more of this, you can go to the Pixelogic YouTube channel, uh, Pixelogic webpage, and also I did a quick. This is all new to you. Under my playlist here, there's a. Where's that at? You know what? Let's just do this. Um, Zebras 2018, what's new? And so all of this stuff here, the Sculptures Pro and Testament and Polygrouping, and then anything that's new in 2018, I think I covered in here. 
So you can go and check that out. So uh, Tessimate won't stick things together, uh, and also Sculptures Pro won't, but Dynamesh will, so you'd have to either use different resolutions. Uh-oh. I've got to go to the dentist. Okay. Uh, wrap it up. Um, you know what? If I... Let's see. Um, thanks for showing up, everybody. Sorry I have to run early today. Uh, I wasn't planning on shipping my tooth, but... Yeah, AK Chang, I can't, I'm not sure about that point thing. I can't get it to work too good. Uh, do you use any pictures programs? Pure Ref doesn't feel... Uh, I use Quadro. Reference Viewer. In fact, now that you mention that, if I go to my Twitter page here, so K-U-A-D-R-O is a Reference Viewer, is the Reference Viewer I use. And then also, if we go to... You go to Twitter and go to Louise Cruel. Um, let's see if he has uh, Quadro. He's, you know, if you have any um, features for Quadro that you want to use, then uh, go tweet at him and he'll integrate some of those features, maybe. Uh, but yeah, Quadro, K U A D R O, Reference Viewer is what I use. And then you can. Uh, yeah, mask lasso isn't going to work with backface mask. That's always going to mask all the way through the object. Um, what you can do is visibility. So you can hold down Control Shift, and you can say, get rid of all these backface masks masks manually. And then when you go through here, and you use masking, it'll mask all the way through. But if you bring everything back, it won't. So it's a couple different steps, but. Um, and then. Spooky says, if you press shift to smooth and release a shift button while smoothing, it'll have a different behavior. Are there any buttons or brush that behave like this when you release it? Not that I know of, but yeah, that is a different algorithm. Although it used to be a different algorithm. You hold down shift to start smoothing. Let's turn off Sculptures Pro Mod off. Shift to smooth and then letting go of shift does the different algorithm. I think with Sculptures Pro on, if you shift to smooth and then let go of shift, it'll actually inflate. So it's inflating with Sculptures Pro, and then after the Sculptures Pro off, Shift to Smooth is just doing the uh, different smoothing algorithm. So that's maybe two different ways to use that. Alrighty, thank you everybody. Have a good day. I'll be back on Thursday on my channel. And uh, thanks again. Sorry, I'm gonna go get my tooth fixed. <sighs> Not my favorite thing in the world to do.